Salutations, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, in which we're playing as that great, beautiful Iberian Federation. Last time we did the elections, and Fraga won with a conservative democracy. So I'll be honest with you guys, half the comments from yesterday's video, or maybe even more half the comments, wanted me to really, really go market liberal, like I wanted to do, or even liberal democracy instead of conservative democracy. So, here's what I did. I went off screen and did this twice. I played the elections again, and I chose everything I could to push for liberal democracy as well as market liberalism and in the end both times right in the end the conservatives still won because of the rural votes even though I did not give them more votes uh, that was one of the comments from yesterday like they won the conservatives conservatives won because I gave them more votes in the rural democracy so I played it off screen and I did not give them more votes and did everything I could to not let them win and they still won they've got like 10% more support right at the like the last day somehow I'm not sure how, actually I kind of know how, because I probably chose inviting the conservatives in, so I know I disappointed some people with my, uh, with the path that we have right now, with conservative democracy path, but, you know what that means? That some, someday again, we will play as Spain, and the goal will be to go full either liberal democracy or market liberal, uh, d democracy, you know, liberal, liberal, market liberalism, the next time we play Iberia, because... Iberia is a very fun nation to play, especially if they get more content later on. So, that just means we're going to play Iberia again someday, which will be a lot of fun, because I really enjoy Iberia here. It's very interesting. But let's go ahead and improve our academic base first. Books, as the saying goes, are the light of the world. While there's no book quite so good as a good book, there's no shortage of great, if less relevant, literature to inspire and educate both current and future generations. We will not go down in history as a pack of book-burning fanatics like the Nazis when we can instead encourage the growth of our public libraries with more funding, literacy programs, and grants for new authors. The more old-fashioned members of our party occasionally express their dismay at the possibility of deviant or, God forbid, Marxist scribblings finding their way into the hands of our youths, but we trust that Proper education will have everything or everyone agree to relegate such trash to the dustbin of history. And also, we did finish up last time uh, Patriarch Education, in which we got now a whopping four research slots. So if everything isn't quite exactly the same as yesterday, but it's pretty close. We have one, two, three, four, five full lines going on. And we have special agency stuff going on as well. Trying to finish up stuff here. Uh, go and do that. Military austerity. Uh, let's continue that because... We currently get almost 300 million, almost that, roughly 300 million in terms of annual deficit. So I'm slowly slashing the national debt while our GDP is still growing up. I should really invest it into our GDP, but oh well. It's Spain, what are you going to do about that? Uh, but yeah, I will play as Iberia again someday. Iberia, like I said, it's so much fun. Just the tumultuous times of Iberia just makes it for a lot of, a lot of good times. Iberia forever, a nation of freedom, political party registration, nation of morals, Fra Fraga speaks... A Catholic nation. Let's go with uh, connections with the OFM. Europe is full of deceit and betrayal. An enemy in Berlin, liars in Rome and Istanbul. We cannot trust anyone around here to work with us. To potentially have our back across the Atlantic, however, in Washington, perhaps is someone we can trust or at least work with. The OFM is our best option here, and the position in Europe provides a strong bargaining chip, so we should open discussions with them immediately. <clears throat> Maybe we should beeline for that, just because you never know what Ballman might do. You never, 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 never know. Let's see, and let's do this one. I think... Yeah, preemptive strikes. We might have done one yesterday, but since I basically replayed it once again, just to see what would happen if I tried to redo the elections, I forgot the choices I made. So, yeah, it's definitely interesting playing as Iberia because so you see you see the mistakes and the the things I do. You see, but I always try to go. I don't always try to go back, but sometimes I try to go back and change my mistakes or change the things we want to do. So yeah, like. The PRD, this time, when I try to off-screen, happy 1970, happy new decade, my friends. It's going to be a new decade for us. But, uh, it was like 104 for the UR, 104 for the AP, and then 106 for the PRD. But right at the last second, literally the last, like, day, the real people just got more votes, which was probably my fault because, uh, I gave them too much support earlier on. I let them into the council. That was my fault. But, like I said... I want to play Zyberia again someday. I, I, I'll be honest, I really like TNO. I don't know why. I, probably because it's very narrative-driven. That's probably why I like TNO a whole lot. I love stories. But let's do his common or Hispanic common heritage. The Americans share a past with us. We birth the nations of Latin America, and many North Americans are descended from us. Uh, through these shared histories, and perhaps we can make some connections, Spanish and Portuguese are t the two most spoken languages in all of the Americas after all. Stability, political power, as well as America gets that too. That's weird that America gets that. 
And say North America, because isn't I'm pretty sure Mexico is technically part of North America. It's Canada, USA, and Mexico. They are part of North America. Now, below Mexico is Central America, and then you have South America. So, it's weird that only the USA... I mean, yeah, that has a flag, com Hispanic Common Heritage, but still. Anyway, advance the story holes. Don't mind if we do. Almost a billion in annual deficits. Oh, my goal at this point is to get rid of our debt. Any and all debt. Depth charge is cool. Uh, also, I didn't... Did I change this up as well yesterday? Forget threes. There's forget th threes. Sub two. Cool. Awesome. Come on, let me slash, slash, slash. I could lower construction spending a little bit more too. I just spent a little bit more time making a few more military... Not military. Civilian factories this time around. Just because we could. Go and throw at least one on those. And throw one, two. There you go. Get even more refiners because we can. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Civilian austerity. Nope, 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 nope. Look at reserves. Paid off, paid off. Nice. 16.67. Nice. Special forces training. And are we doing... Cryptology. Yes, we are. It takes forever, but hey. In 70 days, well, the French state and German, Germany as well. Let's do a visit to Washington. Considering our shared heritage with the Americans and our current standing in Europe, it has been decided to draw closer to the USA and its allies in OFM. In order to do this, we will show them our willingness to open new diplomatic channels and capacity to trust. Therefore, a number of senior civil servants for the foreign office will be sent as envoys to Washington, which would be a great, great thing. Let's see. Let's see black market trading. Yeah. I want to play Iberia again. It's so much fun. It just... I don't know. The emotional and kind of strategic t seesaw that when you play as any nation really in uh, TNO, especially like Iberia, because things could go really poorly and it seems like you can't do anything about things. I don't know. It, just, it keeps you, at least for me, more entertained. I, I, I really enjoy it. It's like, oh, it just, draw, just draws me in. I don't know about you guys, but it just draws me in to want to... See what happens next. Hey, look! Better industrial expertise. New training programs motivated by a need for better workers and managers has resulted in industrial workplaces that are more exact, efficient, and smart in the production of goods. New technologies and equipment are important, but they never trump the human element, which is driven by practice and education. These new training programs are motivated by national vocation programs, investments in worker safety programs, have driven our workers toward the towards true, perfect industrial efficiency. When they clock in, they'll become machines of the highest order. This is a goal. So we now become innovative industries, so we get more attention, cap, and growth. Cool. Probably one of... The I don't know, in my mind, that might just be one of the weaker ones. But, innovative industry. But hey, we're innovative leaders of the world. Because that's the highest you can get. Awesome, awesome. Better tanks, cool. And yeah, I just researched that. We'll grab some ceramics, because I didn't research that one yet. I forget what I researched. I think I've researched... What did I research? I have no idea. What did I research? Death charges, preemptive strike, civilian construction. Yeah, I decided to go with some stuff just a little bit ahead of time, because I thought it'd be pretty important to do. Cool. Very good, very good. Got that. We already did that. Diplomatic training. A visit to Washington. Cool. Uh, import modern designs. American military advisor. Expand, expand Atlantic training. So there are many benefits to having good relations between two state actors, or rather, in our case, between an alliance of states and our union. One of these is an increase in trade, hence economic growth and specialization. With such opportunities known as short reach of our eager fingertips, we must make sure that our infrastructure is capable of maintaining the transport and storage requirements of Atlantic training. And upgrade, of course, is in order. American delegation visits, visits Madrid. The Iberian President's uncontrollable excitement at the prospect of much-anticipated OFN delegation arriving in Madrid today was only palpable to all of his senior advisors and civil servants, who he ordered to make final preparations for his welcoming guests. Their arrival should be marked as a historic event. He has been unsure whether the Americans and their allies would be pursue the great risk directly associated with visiting Iberia after he set a successful diplomatic mission recently to D Washington, D.C. The positive news had opened entirely new pathways for the two peoples to find their position on the world stage amongst the competing world powers. Finally, there might be the option of directly being involved in the future of a ravaged Europe and the struggling globe in general. Not only just the eternal watchers or low-level influencers as secondary power in a doomed anti-German alliance. Hope was the primary, primary emotion of the many Spanish and Portuguese as an impressive American plane landed in Madrid and this was reflected for the duration of their stay and during the lengthy discussions held at Madrid Palace Hotel in our Boston capital. Come back whenever you want. Please come back. Please spend your money here. Please, please, please. Because we are focusing quite a bit on, uh, wow, minus 1.6 billion. Oh, man. 16.6? Oh, I'm ready to crush that debt. And debt, like I've said before, and TNO, not a bad thing. It's really not a bad thing at all. It just, personally, man, debt, student loans, this for me. Ooh. Gotta crush them. Gotta crush, 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 crush them. Cool. Very cool. What's going on? And... 
Order for oh boy, the devil of Showa rises from hell. Oh man. Well, that's no good for Japan. The way of the warrior is to be found in dying. Well, I don't know. Maybe, but if you do that, then you can't do anything else. Oh, look at this. Oh, I gotta play Japan someday. As good as new. Oh boy, a stroke of misfortune. Oh man, I there's I want to play so many nations in TNO. And TNO 2, the next update, hasn't even come out for the time of this recording. But I still want to just play as many nations as possible. 16.46. Nice. Oh, was that the sound of casings dropping? Shells dropping? Huh. Expand Atlantic trade, and then we shall do import modern designs. The Iberian military, as it stands today, is horribly outdated. Our old Vera... The Ardesia tanks are jokes. Our old Messerschmitt and Heinkel copies are jokes. Our military is a joke, technologically speaking at least. Unlike the OFN armies, standing at the forefront of technological advancements, the U.S. is capable of quickly raising our military from the gutter into modernity through imports of new equipment that we badly need. Guns, missiles, aircraft, ships, tanks, and so much more. All we need now is a lot of signed checks, and from there on, Iberia will be a lot more menacing to the eternal Hun. Very cool. Also, I didn't put in any maintenance companies yet on my uh, tank divisions yet, which I probably should do. Yeah, AP... Yeah, it's, it's weird, because they have libertarian socialism and authoritarian socialism. No democratic socialism, which, I don't know if that exists. Maybe, maybe that exists here, maybe in this universe, I have no idea. But it's either democracy, literally authoritarian, conservative, market liberal, or liberal democracy. Or you just go with socialism of a, any variety, which is kind of weird. But that's just me. I don't know. Got some ciphers done. And we've got to finish one up for Ordenshot Burgundy, which... It's going to take so long to do. Holy crap. That's over two years. Over two years-ish. Oof. That's a kind of a long time. Oof. Just keep paying up. 0.32. Nice. Almost 48 billion in GDP. <sighs> I love it. Invest. I want to invest in South America. Invest in the Caribbean. Ooh, I want to invest in the Caribbean too. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, I got, we got to do American military advisors next. Given the improvement in diplomatic relations between the OFN and the Great Union, we are finally able to share knowledge to further advancements of all sorts of different matters of the state. After all, what are good friends who do not share? Despite our army being a force to be reckoned with, at least in the eyes of some, it can always be used as a keen and knowledgeable foreign eye to point out further areas of improvement since perfection is not a concept rooted in reality. The experience the Americans have had in the recent conflicts could be a great help in modernizing our army further. Whether we will follow their point of advice is another question entirely. So we will get an event talking about that a little bit, which is fine. Uh, oh, we need some more anti-tank. Oh. Okay, industrial es espionage. Uh, we'll go focus a little bit more on anti-tank. That's fine with me. Let's see, over here. Cool. Oh, we got some more refineries. Good. That'll help out with when we build up more factories. Uh, do that as well. Civilian construction. Good. Very, 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 very good. Let's go grab some of that uh, maintenance. Good. Anything over here? Uh, import infantry weapon designs. Oh, get a bonus? Yeah, we might as well. You know, we could probably use that, actually. Um, yeah, we could probably do something like that. There you go. Wow, we got a lot. Of, that's a lot of APCs. Holy cow, man. Now, I want to increase the size of our tanks. Like, because I want to make them 40 combat width. We probably actually have enough army speed to do it now. So let's go ahead and duplicate this first. Big tanks. Ah, cool. Got some more armored skirts. That's great. Grab some more because you can. And let's throw on a few more main battle tanks here, here, here. Military, American military advisors, throw in some more APCs. We'll come back to this in just a little bit. Let's invest in the Caribbean first. Along with trade, increased foreign direct investment is another benefit to closer ties with the states. Both become building blocks in bringing the two separate economies closer, integrating them into one prosperous union. The Caribbean, our last former uh, imperial imperial foothold in the Americas, is under strong OFN influence. If we were to invest in this area, we could further deepen the ties to the alliance, secure future trade routes, and investment across the Atlantic and the Iberian Peninsula, which would be great. Let's see. Do we actually still have a deficit? We do. Keep splashing, though. Oh, yeah, that's nice. 0.18, 16.18, not bad. Really not bad. American advisors arrived, though. American advisors have arrived to assist our military. Now that they are here, the question is how to best involve them with the military. They will fill in, in any role we place them in, but there's uncertainty to the degree they'll be integrated within the military. We could place them in general staff, which would give their loyalty to us, could be helpful, as well as a larger benefit could provide to our military. If we were to keep them as separate advisors, it would be less controversial. The population of Iberia is rather divided on this move, and so we will need to make a decision with opinions of the public in mind. Uh, keep them separate. I'm going to go with embed them in the military leadership. Help us out as best you can. You know, we want to have goodwill between both of our sides, so... Uh, I'm not going to do 15-5, which is what I normally do, just because I'm looking at organization, and I don't want to get really below 40, so I'm going to throw in 
another APC here. It does lower our armor by a little bit more, but it just gives a little bit more organization. Throw in one more. And maybe throw in another APC. That's 40 combo width. It's just barely above 40. Armor, that's still pretty darn good. I mean, look at that breakthrough. 2,000. So we went with 7, what? 7, 13. It is what it is, you know. We'll probably never use them, but that's okay. If we need to use them, that's the most important thing here. Oh, look. Decisions. Ooh, we can do more training? Yes, please. Go and do some wiretapping, because we love wiretapping. And let's see, special army training? Uh, special navy training? Special air training? Oh, army officer training? Well, can I only do one? Well, I guess we'll do all these then. I mean, we got over 1,600 political power, so why not? People might not actually like that, so, hmm. Oh, well, it is what it is. Oh, actually, did our, our GDP went down a little bit more, it looks. Oh, no, it went back up, because it was 47.98. Now it's 48, which is good. 16.18, still not bad. Annual deficit. I could slash spending a little bit more. 0 0.04, nice. Invest in the Caribbean. Great, great, great. Invest in South America. So South America wants a combined jewel of the Iberian Imperial Conquest and Colonization, now firmly under the thumb of freedom, as a great target to invest into. As a former colonial master, it is our duty to help these young nations thrive despite our fraught past. It also helps to show the OFN that our intentions approaching them are pure and for the good of both actors involved. In the future, our investments may even return a good flow of dividends, helping our economy in turn as well. And what do we got? Invest in Haiti. A small amount of money will enter our reserves. Their GDP growth will increase. Dominican Republic, same thing for them. And then same thing probably for Cuba. Our reserves will see an influx of cl clash, cash. So reserves zero. If we do it once, what do we get? Oh, active for 950. Oh my gosh, 950 days. When removed. Holy crap, that's a long time. Okay, well you might as well just do it now then. Since we'll never see that investment. <clears throat> oh man, that's over two years. Oof, that's roughly three years. Jesus. Oof, that is a long, 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 long time. I could cut the truck. Could cut construction some more. So three, four, five, six. Six and a half, literally six and a half. Because that's how we put up a lot of radar. Just so that anyone who tries to invade us, well, we'll, we'll probably know that when they're coming. So. Guess do some of that. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Iraq collapses into some war. No, 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 no. That can spawn some pretty bad stuff for us, I think. Oh, no, no. Nope, nope. That is exactly what I do not want to see. Oh, we already have it, though. Please. Ah. Look at that. No. Nothing good can come out of this. People do not words. They want the sound of battle. The battle of destiny. Oh, God. Oh, red. Black, gold, red, sand. Oh, consumer goods. Construction speed. No. No. Why do you hurt me? Why do you hurt me like this? Ask for Gibraltar. Assistance. Deal with La Cadencia? La Canadienza. And now a Canadian state utilizes company... Uh, utilities companies, the last world capital in our country, used to be in the European hands before the great slump broke by the German madness of the 50s. Were we to purchase this equipment in the site, we could further electrify the peninsula deep in ties to the Canadian government. We should raise the issue with the Canadians at the next summit. Oh god, please don't tell me that we're in debt. Oh no, no. Oh, oil crisis hits Siberia. No! Long built tensions in the Middle East have finally erupted, culminating in several emergent rebel groups and former colonies fighting with e amongst, either amongst each other or against a former overlord. With this wide scale conflict over comes at a cost. The Middle East contains a vital resource hidden underneath its desert sands, oil. With access to the valuable material cut off, it gen its general pricing has fluctuated significantly, causing widespread economic downturn among many countries in the process. Unfortunately, the Iberian Federation was not spared from this, as, ma as the majority of its oil was imported from abroad. At the same time, as the situation escalates, nations with large stockpiles either refuse to sell any of their precious petroleum or spec its price at extremely high values. Another disadvantage brought on by this oil shortage is a departure of several foreign businesses operating the Iberian alongside the mass frenzy of investors panicking and selling their stocks before it's too late. This has led the Iberian Federation to experience nationwide cycles of workers' layoffs, mass unemployment, and incurment of large amounts of debt. The government has announced quickly plans to devote its remaining resources intensely in order to quickly solve the immediate problems, but the entire situation still remains uncertain. Disaster. Oh, wait, we should your focus tree. Oh, oh, crisis. Uh, I want to finish off. Uh, we just started that one. Just do that one. That's fine. So, oil. I did not realize we'd have an oil crisis. Okay. Okay, this is cool, because whenever I played as uh, England or, you know, the United Kingdom, oh, the United. I never got the option to do anything about this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do it one more time. That barely helped, but it's still nice. Oh, that, that bypassed. Cool. And we probably can't do anything else until we get this done. Actually, we can do this still, but that didn't really help us. More sport, less Latin. 
emergency austerity measures. It has become obvious to our new government that the need for our strict austerity measures has grown larger by the day. Our plans for a double pronged approach with both tax hikes across the board and rooting out wasteful spending that holds over the previous administration. By changing our government spending, we will be able to ensure that the crisis doesn't get any worse than it currently is. While this certainly won't endear the population to our government, we can only hope that this will be able to hold our position in power long enough to get through this crisis so that we will be able to lift the measures. Oh boy. Oh, that austerity measures? That could be very painful. Invest in Eastern South America for 950 days. Our, our and their growth, GDP growth, will go up a little bit. When selected, our expenses will rise. So be it. No, we don't have time for this. No, 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 no. 1.6, that's not bad. 49 billion. I mean, that's still not bad. I mean, we have a little bit of a deficit, but whatever. That's that's still, still manageable. Iraq, Iraq, why? Why? Why do you pay me? We were doing so well all of a sudden. We had elections. We were doing great with our GDP. We are actually slashing the debt down. Why do you hurt us? Ah! What is this? Tactical bombers? We don't believe in tactical bombers. Anti tank? Yeah, we can still focus on that a little bit. Anti grill activities. Go ahead and lower our military spending on. I don't want to do main battle tanks. How's our guns doing? Guns? Where are you? Oh, we're not even using guns. Oof. And <sighs> agency infiltration, so be it. <sighs> Maintenance company ones, cool. Can't send volunteers, but whatever. Uh, we could do two, but we can kind of wait on that. Uh, I forgot to do better artillery. God dang it. <sighs> Go put on uh, these guys here, too. That'd be fine. Uh, we don't have enough army XP for the next one. That's fine, whatever. Keep making better skirts. Like, we got a lot of skirts we can need. So, military or emergency austerity measures. Ration the oil. Actions would increase conservative democracy. Uh, free salaries. With austerities put in place, many previous, uh, previously subsidized industries are now struggling to be able to maintain their employees' wages, which has led to a spiking unemployment and wage decreases. If this trend continues, their economy will become paralyzed as consumer spending and business investments begin to dry up. This is why it seems necessary to freeze salaries to prevent an unemployment crisis on top of our current economic crisis. However, many of the business leaders we have countered or courted over the election cycle have expressed their discontent at this policy behind closed doors, so we will have to placate them at some point. So be it, whatever. This looks all nice and all, but oh my goodness. If that's the case, I know this will do nothing, but I just it just seems like we should invest in more like refineries so we can develop more fuel for ourselves. <laughs> so we have to rely across the ocean for stuff like that. Alright, let's uh, I don't want to do this, but do that one. There you go. Well Iraq has defeated the Islamic Republic of Iraq. I R I. Islamic Republic of Iraq. Oof. Free salaries, yeah, look at this. 24%, 21%, 28%. Ugh, terrible. And I'm doing it with my cat Binky, who looks like he wants to leave my room. Oh, that deficit. Iraq, why did you just have to upset everyone? Why? Can't you just, like, have democracy or elections to help you offset stuff? So we just made another civilian factory. didn't help our deficit at all, but that's fine. Yeah, right now, our... Huh. Agency infiltration. Deficit to income ratio is just 10%, so that's actually pretty good. Print to strikes is pretty cool. And let's go ahead and grab. So we're done finally again with our land auction, which is cool. Let's go ahead and grab. Retention cap plus 5%. Cap plus, yeah. Cap. This would be better to do. Flexible automation techniques one. That's pretty good to do. I like that. Three salaries. Beginning of a Burgundian spring or just more corruption? Burgundian bunkers. What? Burgundy, what are you doing? Son, what are you doing? Chain the pestos. Interest rates will... Oh, decrease. Decrease? Decrease. Ooh, increase the taxes. Let's ration the oil. With the oil stockpile is drying up and the prospect of getting new oil being low, it is vital that we establish an oil rationing system as soon as it is possible to conserve what little oil we have until we can get more to or find alternate alternative energy sources. Many consumer prices or goods are relying on oil, from cars to plastics, and a shortage could lead to protests and even rioting. This will be unpopular both with the average citizen and the big industrialists, so it's important to not to be too strict with, that we risk a popular uprising or capital flight. Please do not uprise. We're doing the best we can here. We're trying to open up new refineries, too, even. We can always... Actually, can we still trade for oil? I mean, technically, yes. So, I'm just going to leave it there for now. Oh, yeah, definitely cut down civilian spending. But, yeah, we can always trade for more oil with the USA, so it's not as bad of an oil crisis. When the oil crisis happens... Maybe the U United States does get the option to see if they want to sell oil. Do they still get that option? Do they get the option to open up new reserves in like in Alaska or Texas or Oklahoma or even California? Because California has got a lot of fuel itself. Oh, it goes Kurdistan. Uh, Iraq. Wait. 
Civil War II? Electric Boogaloo? Okay. Yeah, look at that. California oil. That's so huge. Wow. That's a lot of fuel. Uh, get some more artillery, even though we should probably be focusing on guns instead, but whatever. Nice. Very nice. Anything over here? Not really. We could allow, we could allow the workers <clears throat> on the dam, which is done, to unionize. Yeah, no, they're content. The dam is done, so I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty good, man. 1.75. Oh, why do you pay me? Let's ration the oil and then electric diversification. With the general public clearly discontented at the oil rationing measures we've had to pl place in, it's become obvious to the government that we need to find alternative energy sources. Not only will this mean that Iberians will have the electricity back, but it also means that what oil we have can be used on consumer goods, which would hopefully appease the masses. Through consulting experts in many areas, scientists to engineers to architects, the government will conduct large-scale investigations into wind power due to a high potential of the peninsula, and to begin work on constructing the new five new nuclear power plants. Ooh! We should, we should build some nuclear power plants. Yeah, we totally should. Why have I not thought of that yet? Because I wasn't thinking about it. Cool. Hey, look, almost a year for Burgundy. Nice. It is almost 1971, so you know, let's, let's grab this. Let's grab this, yeah. In outer Madrid. We're not going to put it in Madrid. We'll just put it in outer Madrid, so if things go boom, well, the capital's going to die, probably. Eh, that's okay. Good, build, 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 build. Oh, oh, look at that. We have one, two, three. Only three now, plus a little bit more. So, hmm, that's big sadness. I hate the oil crisis so much. Why do you hurt me so? When I played as the United Kingdom or, you know, England and the United Kingdom of England and Wales and then Scotland and whatever, there was no way to modify this. I like Spain that, or Spain, my bad, not Spain, it's not Spain, Iberia. I like that Iberia has some sort of way to deal with it, which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Oh, why do you pay me? Please. America, UK, can you please invade Iraq? Like, it's 1970, I know it's not 2003. Can you just go in there and, like, stabilize the oil prices, please? Israel. I just realized, hold on. Israel is massive. Italy still has the Suez Canal, though. Huh. Chain the Pesata. Pesata. The oil crisis is sent courtesy to the Pesata, into a disarray as it rises and falls in such a volatile manner, and that our citizens and firms struggle to get on by a day to day basis. Savings practically disappear one day and then return double the next. That sounds awesome. A continuation of this trend is unpredictably. Must be stopped or else we face a much worse crisis. It's for this reason that the government has decided to peg the Pesata. Pesata. To a set value and hope that we can return some stability to our domestic and international markets, our interest rates will decrease slightly. I mean, um, by slightly, do you mean like 0.4? Because I'll take, I'll take 0.4. That'd be great. Ooh, multi-layer ceramics. Upgrade hacking. Or computer hacking. Very cool. Grab some of that. And then we shall grab some of this. We're almost done with our intelligence stuff. So we get a few more factories back. Okay, 1.73. That's better than 1.85. That's a big Israel, man. Hmm... Oh, Dofar Rebellion, look at that. They're over there. Sonar, cool. Uh, we can make better destroyers. Let's make some better carriers, I guess, at the same time. Like, we edited this stuff yesterday. It really doesn't matter, though. Corvette, frigate, 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 carrier three. Oh, no, 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 no. Cut the military spending. We can't afford that. Destroyer four. Looking pretty nice. Uh, any, we don't have any better torpedoes. Much better engine. Radar, we haven't really worked on at all. Fire Control 1. Anti-Air 4. Light Battery 2. Let's go with Rapid Fire Guns again. Go with better anti-air. Go with... Uh, we have no ASW... Oh, yeah, we do. Right, there we go. De better depth charges. And Rapid Fire Guns. I'm going to go with... Let's go with Torpedoes. Why not? We're never going to use these, but I like them. Destroy 3s. Goodbye. Forget 3s. Corvette 3s. Goodbye. Still making carrier ones, holy crap. That is not ideal. Ooh, do we need more guns? Minus three. No, we got 42,000 in the stockpile, so that's not bad. Tune the Pesetta. Cool. Find new markets? Yes, please. Even though before the oil crisis, Iberia was suffering from the breakdown of the trade and the economic infrastructure provided to commerce in the Mediterranean. Despite this, we're still overwhelmingly reliant on the trade with Italy and Turkey, and it's partly this reliance which has caused and exacerbated our current economic woes. It is high time to diversify our trade and find new trade partners, preferably ones that are not entangled in the dangerous regional politics of Europe, and share a desire for free markets and democracy. Oh, so for democracy and free markets, we go to the French state and Reich's commissary at Ukraine. Yeah. Why not? Import armor designs? Sure. Why not? Yeah. These guys really know what democracy means in Rex Commissariat Ukraine. Hmm. <coughs> Woo! Alright, so the last one is right here. Psychological warfare. And we're done. 
well, once that's done, we, are, we will be done with all of uh, this stuff. Nice. We get a few more factories to work with, which would be very nice. Too bad we can't get any more guys. You guys have been trading your butts off. Go ahead and finish trading for that stuff. Oh, yeah, that really reduces fuel. Whew. You're only gaining 81 a day. Not bad. Keep building more civilian factories all the time. It's just it's so useful. We are ex an extremely stable union. We can sovereignty. Hopefully that goes away someday. Raga is looking a little bit weird. Cool. And 1950s armament upgraded. Right. Get base bleed next. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Our infantry will hit even harder. Hey, look. 10. Nice. Buy new markets. Hey, it went down to 1.25. Oh, wow, look at, oh, our growth went down, oh, by 2.4 or 2.7%, but our uh, annual debt interest went down by one, one percentage, yeah, it went down by one, that's slightly, I'll take that, yeah, well, that's great, yeah, uh, let's go with social security cutbacks, well, we've already had made some cuts to wasteful spending, we are still operating at a deficit, so it has been decided that the Seguridad Social, our primacy, primary institution for handling social services such as child care, need to be streamlined and have its budget reduced so that we can get our finances back in order. Uh, the cuts required to balance books will bleed over into services that are quite popular, but so long as we promise to restore them once the crisis is over, we might be able to avoid a sharp dip in the polls. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I could cut construction spending, but that is the second worst offender in terms of spending. Civilian spending, man. Woo! That is a lot of spending. Could you ever imagine having billions of dollars? I can't. Woo! What is Germany up to now? I know Bormann's leading it. They're not to nothing. Please go to war. Oh, wait, hold on. No, they're, they're ramping up production. Nice, we're doing psychological warfare. Keep the Wehrmacht afloat. A favorable... I gotta, I've gotta place Germany again sometime. My goodness, the GDP will take a hit. Help the populace. Our national debt will rise. Hmm. Oh, harsh quotas. Ooh. Fuel gain for oil. The power of the atoms. Oh, yes. Why didn't they do that? New source of income. Civilian. Nope, 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 nope. nope. And back to ba Back to black. Cool. Slash, slash, slash. 1.32, that's not bad. Not bad, look at that, 18. Keep getting that fuel, guys. We gonna need it. India's looking pretty cool. How's China doing? On the Wii fields, they still, have, they still have a focus to do. That's so awesome. Conference, huh? All is well, China must united against its greatest foe. Okay, then. Anything over here? Nope. Oh, look at all this. We got so much to do. Oh my goodness, two years left. Uh, Russia? What's going on? You got one, two. You guys gotta kill each other and take out Kazakhstan. But the Kingdom of Siberia is looking pretty nice. We'll take a look at them once we get to our next focus. Iraq is dying. Whatever. Increased taxes? Ooh. Partially pro pu privatized public services? Yes. The state is in dire financial straits and finds itself unable to continue to provide many of its basic public free services for free. In order to raise emergency funds to keep state finances afloat and cut down on bloated public spending, we have to privatize elements of our various public services. Healthcare, or health, education, welfare, and even pensions will be subject to privat privatization schemes, opening up portions of the functions of private industry while leaving the remainder in public hands. The public sector unions will almost certainly object and will have to be dealt with. Look. Oh, protests against austerity? Look. Everyone's suffering, man. What, what's your problem? A bearded man on the TV screen. Probably one of those godforsaken student radicals was holding up a sign. It reads, Fraga is a fascist. The camera lingered on him for some time before panning out the, the rest of the rally several thousand strong. Can you believe this crap, Jorga? President Emmanuel Fraga said, growing exasperated as he stared intently at the screen. I deliver them democracy and they call me a fascist. The youth are so ungrateful. Uh, Mr. Verstringe, Fraga's second-hand man and political protege, fidgeted nervously in the seat as the two men sat before the TV screen. What he would say next would certainly anger his boss, but it had to be said. Respectfully, Manuel, it's not just the youth. The cuts has turned a great number of people against us. Pensioners, the sick, those with disabilities, the unemployed. Austerity was certainly necessary to stop an economic crash created by the oil crisis, but we have to recognize how unpopular the cuts are. They are only temporary, Fraga scoffed. And what can we do? It's not like we could give in to the demands of reversal cuts. To do so would not would be to bow to the will of the mob. No. The streets belong to the state, not the people. The streets belong to me. I would be better be better off sitting in the place to clear them all out. Mr. V was disturbed by such shock, but did not let it show. There might come a day where Fraga overstepped, and the action would have to be taken, but for now, we have to try and sway him to a reasonable course. Look, nobody's saying we have to give them everything they want, but maybe restoring funding to a few of the programs, partially reversing a few of the cuts. That would defuse the protests and still ensure we avoid financial ruin. Fraga's eyes broke away from the television screen and turned to Mr. V. He was clearly surprised by the proposal. All I ask is that you consider it, Manuel, V said, trying to ward off an argument before it began. All I want is the best for Iberia. With the police. Um... I don't 
I don't want the police to intervene, but if we can lower conservative support, that might be really good. Uh, yeah. This one does not look good, but you know what? Uh, I don't know if this could get really hurt us. Just deal with them. Look, we're all suffering here. And Fraga might be a little insane, just because he thinks he's a dictator. Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. But... We've got to do whatever makes all of Spain great. Not just a little few people, but all of Spain. Yes. Oh, wait, that's that ahead of time? Oh, crap, that's not good. Whatever, who cares? It doesn't matter. Imports? What? Guns? Import infantry weapons? Ah, infantry weapon design's great. Great, 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 great. We're trying to get through this as fast as possible. we got to open up new refiners, which we were trying to do, and build a nuclear power plant here, or at least nuclear power, or reactor, so maybe we can build up a power plant. I don't know. The Germans might be, end up doing that. Why can't we? But at least we're back on four. And almost full four. That's really nice. Because infrastructure-wise, the mainland is looking great. Oh, we forgot uh, Ceuta. Or what is this called down here? Tangier? Spanish Africa? Ceuta? I know that from EU4. What are you guys doing over here? How about you guys go home? Come on, guys. Come to Lisbon. Come home. Will you just hang out and see? Partially privatized services, increase the taxes. It might prove to be the most unpopular measure, but at least for our own voter bases, taxes will have to be raised even further than we want in our initial emergency austerity measures. Our efforts to mitigate the deficit have seen minimal success so far, but both income and tax goods, goods taxes have to be raised or else we'll have to deal with a debt crisis on top of an economic crisis. In order to make sure that we can actually pass this policy, we'll reduce corporate taxes by 2% so that we can get some of the more ideological members of our party to go with it. Confronting the public sector's union. Lucinio de la Fuente had dealt with many strikes. Once such was the job of the Minister of Labor. Although he had been met as a phalangus, or he had been a phalangist, or phalangist, in his youth, experience had now taught him that the softer hand was necessary in such situations. Driving the unions underground during the old regime of the Cadillos had only made matters worse, inflaming radicalism and posing, posing the interests of the state against those of the working man. This is why he had been pushing for the labor reform in the AP government, trying to convince President Fraga to support his genius. So far, he had experienced some successes. The unions were no longer underground, and he could negotiate openly with their leaders. Yet just enough of the restrictions of the old days retained or remained that the state usually had the upper hand just how he liked it. But the oil crisis and now the public sector strike had ruined his plans. Forced to implement sweeping privatization or programs in health, education, and even welfare and pensions to raise emergency revenue and cut down on bloated public spending, the government had now triggered one of the largest public sector strikes in Iberian history, with tens of thousands of public sector workers demanding a reversal of privat privatization schemes and restoration of government funding. As he sat in his office preparing to meet with the union leadership, De La Fuente tossed up his options. He could either tell the unions that they would not be getting a deal, and plus share with his orders to enforce a privatization. He would almost certainly have to deploy this guard, civil guard to crush the strike. Or he could get on the phone right now and call the president. Up until now, Fraga had respected his remit on labor issues. More importantly, Fra Fraga, Fraga, Fraga himself, while deeply worried about the economic crisis, seemed more concerned with avoiding further rifts within the government. De La Fuente knew that if he asked Fraga to moderate the pri privatization scheme, he might just acquiesce, if only to avoid a split. Whatever the choice was, he would have to act soon. Liberal democracy expenses will decrease. Uh, get Prague on the line. Uh, I want more market liberalism, not necessarily social. Do we have social democracy here? Do we have a. We have, uh, do what we must. Like I wonder, this could cause a civil war. Hopefully not. But if that happens, then we end up probably becoming more liberalized. So I don't. I I really have no idea what's going to happen. You can do more training because. Why not? Seems pretty good. Good. More roads. More refineries are good. Can we get 1.24 a day? Not great. We're not using any except for probably building factories, which is okay. But man, this definitely turned interesting. Like, I did not realize that we could actually deal with this crisis. I thought we just had to suck it up and deal with it, but... Hmm. I don't like increasing taxes, but 1.23, not bad, considering where we're at. Okay, 1.36. What is Bowman doing? The new... The new core. Uh, the new core. New core. Uh, nope. 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 There you go. Probably this will come back up very soon, too. So we'll just go get ready to cut that and slash it, too. 17 billion international debt. Man, we were doing so well for a while. We were getting close to almost 16 or below 16 billion. Now it's above 16 and a half. Oh, oh my goodness. Increased taxes. Oh, my goodness. Alright, so let's go ahead and do... Reobtain 
Investor confidence. Interest rates will decrease. Oh, that's not bad. Let's do this one. So the oil crisis has Iberian investors running scared. Investment in the new infrastructure and industry has stalled, and many rich Iberians are even talking, taking their money overseas to safer markets. If we're to lead an economic recovery, then we need to restore investor confidence. The implementation of a series of corporate tax credit schemes will make our markets uh, more attractive. Again, and well as calm down investors, we have also have to talk to business associations and assure them that we are doing everything we can to restart the economy. AP does not raise taxes, said De La Fuente Boom, slamming his fist down on the table. Uh, it says so on our manifesto. It said so on our election material. It, was, it says so on our statements we put out mere days ago. If we go back on that now, it would be a political suicide. The Minister for Labor was angry. Angrier than President Manuel Fraga had seen him in a long time. I guess he had every right to be, with many of his cherished and security programs implemented by his ministry since his establishment of democracy being dismantled in recent weeks. Yet Fraga still had not experienced as much opposition, let alone at a cabinet meetings. We have no choice. Mr. B responded, taking point and showing Fraga why he kept him around as, as a second hand man. It was really quite invaluable in a debate. The oil crisis has sincerely depleted our treasury. If we don't raise taxes, we will not be able to pay back our debts. We're facing a sovereign default. To hell with that De La Fuente retorted, now turning and pleading directly to the president. If we, if we need more money, we have to find it elsewhere. It is a hard, it is a hard working middle class people of Iberia who support a government. Raising their taxes will be a stab in the back. I guarantee, Mr. President, that we, if we do do this to our own supporters, they will throw us out in the next election. Braga knew there was some truth to what La, De La Fuente was saying. The traditional middle class of the uh, AP wanted to see less taxes, not more, and support for the government would atrophy as a result. But the economists had been quite clear to him in his briefings of the economic state of the country either the raise taxes or face oblivion. Either way, he would have to once again wade into the debate and take a side. Uh, keep our promises because I will not say read our lips uh, like George H. W. Bush said so we will not do that we will find new ways of raising taxes maybe I wish we had a more clear way of seeing like what the the effects are uh, let's get better light batteries because we can yeah I really wish we could see like exactly everything because yeah we, we have a deficit right now but that can be paid off later once we get through the economic crisis now which will go away eventually we can pay off our debts that way. Oh, goodness gracious. Iran, no, no. The place of more oil. Hey, look. Iraq is more stable now. Ahmed Hassan al bakhar Hey, Russia's on fire. Great. They got the oil grasses. They've got Deutsche Pelzische Ölgesellschaft. Germany has access to Isfahan and fires oil resources. Ooh. The Shag. I'm so sorry about the Shag. Mossadegh's legacy. The Imperial Guard, the oil crisis, yeah, let's see what Russia's up to now. Oh, that's not good. The Western Siberian Republic probably won't survive against the Kingdom of Siberia because the Siberia, the Kingdom of Siberia is looking pretty thick. And, second night of the Long Knives, the Iranian Civil War, always one step, one death away from Utopia. Wait. Reinhard Gellin's all known Politzai has been mobilized and tasked with crushing all dissent within the Reich. Life does not forgive weakness. Oh my god, Iran has just fallen into complete disarray. Uh, we can't grab that. We could get more resources, but let's grab some enhanced industrial administrative stuff. Um, get rid of the trouble some. You're led by Rurik. I need to play as Rurik someday. Uh, yeah, Boris. I heard he can get a lot of GDP growth or something. Because he has the... What is it? West Siberian plan or something? Gaz program? That's out of there. Gaz pro Oh, Gazprom. People's Shield, Airland Battles, Foreign. Oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Retain, reobtain, investor confidence. These sacrifices are temporary. The oil crisis and subsequent economic crashes put us in an uncomfortable situation. The circumstances have forced us to implement a series of deeply unpopular austerity measures to shore up government revenue and prevent economic catastrophe. We must patiently and carefully explain to the Iberian people that these sacrifices are both vitally necessary for the economic survival of the country and represent only temporary measures that will be reversed when the crisis is over. In the meantime, we will all sit in our belt, grit our teeth, and wait out the crisis. Fraga appears on TV. Oh, this is just unpopular with anybody who does stuff. 1.37, not bad. Not really not bad. Alright, uh, we have so many more roads, which I'm kind of okay with, because I want to finish up. We are looking at a lot of roads being already built. Wow. Come on, get those nuclear power plants going. Go, 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 go. At this point, there looks it seems like there might be still another two episodes after this. I thought there would only be three from yesterday's, but maybe two, just because the oil crisis takes a while to do. And I still want to go to war with Algeria. Like, how dare you leave me? How dare you? Yeah, you're dealing with the oil crisis? Yeah, that's what I thought. They have 13 factories. Well, we got more than 200 more than they do. They have only four divisions. Why can't we invade? Please let me invade. I don't want to go to war with them. Please, please, please. What's America doing? Who's America led by? Bennett? Yeah, Bennett. Guns for democracy. Not bad. Not a bad idea. Smother the flames. There will be blood. Oh, they all. Oh, come on. You could have invaded a new Lafayette. Just like Namibia. Across the burning sands. Guns for democracy. Covert material assistance. Send them, sending them experts. 
Ah. The Hand of Kindness. A more direct approach. Financial reform. Don't rock the boat. Token reform. No, 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 no. Cut that, cut that, cut that. We can't afford that. Oof. All right, and we'll do finding the balance. We've implemented the necessary measures to save the Iberian economy and prevent absolute disaster. Though while the worst might be over, we still face a long and arduous road to recovery. Unemployment is still extremely high, and the social unrest bubbles everywhere. The Marxists and separatists, moral enemies of Iberia, will no doubt try to use this opportunity to tear down what we have built. To calm the storm of public discontent, we will have to find a new balance. Where possible, Austria must be slowly and carefully relaxed. Where necessary, a strong hand must be employed against those threatening the stability and order of Siberia. Siberia, Iberia. Fraga appears on TV. The president knew they would have to make this address account. The whole nation was in uproar over the oil crisis, and the government's austerity program now culminating in mass protests and a huge public sector strike. Meanwhile, the economy was in free fall, unemployment was at an all-time high, and the state was facing financial ruin. If things did not improve soon, Fraga knew that he and his government would be facing catastrophe. Yet, in the meantime, support had to be shored up. Speaking directly to the people, as he'd done many times before, this was his best and last chance. Fellow Iberians began, addressing his countrymen in a customary manner. As you are all aware, the country finds itself in the midst of a deep economic crisis like the likes of which it had never faced. We in the government are well aware of the suffering that is generated amongst broad layers of the Iberian people. It is for this reason that the government has pursued a policy of austerity to make sure that the state, which protects and provides for all Iberians, continues to be able to function. These measures are temporary, and were employed with the greatest possible reluctance on the behalf of myself and the government, and this time of difficulty and struggle. We must all band together as Iberians, tighten our belts, and make sacrifices for the greater good of the country. Many think that the threats to the security and the peace of Iberia have disappeared in this time of economic crisis. They have not. Marxian... Uh, extremism, totalitarian threats from abroad, and separatist terrorism may yet return to Iberia's shores, or Iberian shores, and the spirit of Iberia does not remain vigilant and united. In the years of democracy, we have built a new, modern Iberia. Now I'm asking all Iberians to help defend her, to put the needs of the country and community first. If we all do our duty to Iberia and to God, why is G lowercase there? Uh, obviously, they don't believe in God. We will weather this crisis and come out it stronger than ever before. Let's hope these people listen. We we'll get a little bit more stability, but, hmm. 224 factories, not bad, but, hmm. 1.48. Oh, hey, the GDP growth went up by 0.5, huh? I thought it Wow, look at that annual debt interest, 0.4%. Holy crap, that's really awesome. Our, dude, I mean, that's cool that our GDP growth went up by 0.1, but this one went down by 2%? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. That is really, really awesome. Actually, how, is our, how are our planes doing? 47, we still need more. What is this? Oh, oh, oh yeah, goodbye. What is this? Goodbye. Uh, do we have any close air support then, instead? Yes, we do. Wait, did, did, did I... Oh, we have no manpower now, but... Oh, we can't do that, yeah. That makes sense. That makes actually a lot of sense. Tactical bombers, we don't want to see them. Goodbye. Finding the balance. Oof. Oof. We can't do anything there, so we'll do sport, more sport and less Latin. A classical education is all well and good, but as far as tradition goes, our emphasis on Latin as a mandatory subject for all students might be slightly excessive. After all, can a true Iberian man such as a caballero find the strength to be a good son, father, and husband if he spends his youth with nose buried in the writings of Caesar and Cicero? It may be stimulating for the mind and the sense of heritage, but for the Iberian man is one of action. We will never bend in our most ancient linguistic roots, but the boys we pass our mantle to when the time comes must be strong in both body and spirit to carry the weight of the nation on their shoulders. Very good. So, austerity. What are we doing for austerity? Actually, do we have any other ships? No, we do not. That sucks, because we have no manpower. Iberia turning to normal. Okay, woof! Today's announced from Madrid and Lisbon that after months of hardship and struggle, the oil crisis has rocked Iberia is coming to an end. With the price of oil so high but coming down, the economy still needs time to recover and rebound. But all citizens can breathe a sigh of relief that the worst is over. Fuel and energy for our industry, homes, and transportation is now available in sufficient quantities to return to a somewhat normal life. Normal life. We can rest assured that we are on the right course for a prosperous future. Our prudence will do the job. More political power, more stability. Our GDP growth will increase. And change of conservative democracy will increase as well. And oil crisis on a bill have been really reduced. Now this, honestly, with an event like this, this should help improve everyone else across the world. Maybe even like slightly. Just because we have managed to mostly get rid of the crisis ourselves. Growth, 9.5, goes up to something else. 10.7, okay, that's not bad. 10.7 is not bad. While we still only have 0.4%, that is not bad. I like that a lot. But hey, at least we got through most of the oil crisis unharmed, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we can do that stuff. We'll come back over to eh, engineering. Yeah, I should have done this earlier. More research speed. So how do I lower this deficit? Hmm. I could slash construction spending again. We have one, two, three, four, five. We're back up at five. The Ocrasis is doing a little bit better, hopefully. Yeah, it's still not good. That is still not good. Holy. And we got the cipher done for Augen Augen Augenstadt Bugend. Wow, that still sucks. 
Hopefully that does get lower and lower over time, so that is good to see that. Oof, uh, do Brittany, do, we did the French state, do, do them, oh, 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 oh. really, San Marino exists? Okay, whatever, whatever. Now, let's work with more with the OFN if we can, just so that we can, uh, get some more trade deals. Hey, we got 26 political power, or, I mean, manpower, I wish we had 26 political power in exchange for 1800 manpower, but whatever. Can I trade political power for men? And Shah of Iran is going to war. Uh, revolutionary Alliance collapses. Cool. More sport and less flatten. More stability, which would be okay. Let's do this one, because we were trying to do this one earlier. And after this one, we'll do one more. The new national curriculum. Schooling in Iberia has for decades been a stuffy, rigid, rigid business. Daily lessons in Latin. Prayer at least once a day. And corporal punishment of children, all supervised by the Catholic Church. What's not to love? That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> President Fraga was of the opinion that it was time for a change, if only to bring the country back into the 20th century. Whoever was given the job of spearheading the modernization effort would have to weather the storm of criticism from both the hardliners and the opposition liberals. Fraga would have to find a man of intellect and grit equaling the task. He found such a man in Jose Luis Villar Palasai. Previously a minister in the old regime, but now a supporter of the Iberian democracy, Palasai was a soft, gentle man, unassuming and bespeckled. But underneath that veneer, he hood, hid a towering intellect. Palasai was a polymath speaking over 15 languages, and was known for his love of philosophy, economics, and law. And most important of all, he was a modernizing conservative, determined to bring the Spanish education system up to date with the latest trends and practices while maintaining its religious and civic character. Palisades, a general education law passed easily through the council, supported even by members of the opposition Union uh, Republicana. Its effects were sweeping and immediate. Archaic schooling practices such as Latin lessons were done away with and replaced with useful activities such as sports. Classes and religion would continue on in Catholic danger of the Iberian education would be maintained, but the influence of the priests and nuns would be curtailed in favor of education or educated professional teachers. Social science, philosophy, and economics and politics would be taught for the first time, and a unified system of standardized testing would ensure every student had a chance of going to university. Already immensely popular, the reform had even won over some of the government's detractors and made policy Palisai, policy, a household name. God bless him. Slightly more support for a conservative democracy. So be it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we gotta find ways to get more stuff here. Let's see. 77, 131. Oh, I want more popular PRD. When do we get do we get elections again? We might be able to do that. Hmm. How's Russia doing? They're not doing well. Western Russia, I'd recommend you do something. Maybe. I don't know. Oh my gosh, look at Iran. Well, who's this? The Baluchi Liberation Front? Shandam, Shadam of Iran? Imperial State of... Oh, Mama Farah. And, oh, Authoritarian Socialists. Filling the line. And Democratic Republic of Iran. This looks like... Like, like 2017 Syria? <laughs> Can I say that? Because it's just, it's just one gigantic mess. Ah... Uh, uh, mm, Islamic Republic. This guy has got to exist in real life, right? Ruhola Khomeini. He sounds very familiar. He actually probably exists in real life. Or has existed. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he seems very familiar. I've seen that face before, I think. I think. Yeah, this looks like 2017 Syria. Maybe in modern day Syria, but even then, whatever. And let's finish off with attract industrial investors. The USA and its numerous allies have suffered financially tremendously 30 years ago, causing long-term structural damage to their tottering economy, yet they did not have to follow the German whims into certain ruin, ruin during the last decade like we did. Rather, they were able to use the peaceful years to build an industrial base and we could use envious and, and we could only enviously admire from, 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 from far. I'm sorry, I cannot speak right now. It's been a long episode. With us drawing closer to the OFN, this may change forever. We can use our improvised relations to try to adverse, or advertise our economy to the investors of the free world. But that's going to conclude today's episode. My goodness, we went through one hellacious oil crisis. But we have mitigated its effects, but they're still not gone. But I think Iberia, they're doing, we're doing okay. So, regards, I hope you enjoyed this episode because Italy just went to war with Syria. Oh, God. Um, like, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. But we'll, we will re conclude with uh, Canada sold us La Canadienses assets. Our ingenious tactic of pushing the La Caden the Canadian acquisition proposal onto the overall Canadian delegation at the end of long discussions, especially considering the summit was held in Catalonia, seems to have wholly worked out in our favor. Another piece of foreign-owned capital and our nation is back in capable hands, ready to be used for the good of the Iberian people, not the profit of the already rich Canadian government. We now have the means to further invest in the area of expand existing structures and machinery to make best use of the opportunity of harvesting more energy for bustling an electricity-hungry population. Using the company's existing knowledge in the field, it could also help us to better... Uh understand hydroelectric power generation to better innovate in this field, which in turn may be useful for finding better use of the disastrous Gibraltar Dam. This leap in the right direction, a leap of progress. Cool. But like I was trying to say, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we wade through whatever comes next. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.